Hello everybody, my name is Florian Klim, I'm a research associate at the University of Cambridge and Imperial College London, and today I'm going to tell you why you should consider hypergraphs when looking at multi-protein complex data. This work is a collaboration with Vizina Reinhardt and Charlotte Dean from the University of Oxford. We have a manuscript in our work in BioArchive, and the Python code is available on GitHub. This work has been sponsored by the EESSC. Proteins are active biomolecules in the human body that fulfill many different biological functions. Importantly, they fulfill their functions not on their own, but by interacting with one another. We can measure those interactions between proteins and represent pairwise interactions as graphs, in which nodes are proteins, and we connect those nodes pairwise if there's interaction between the associated proteins. It is known, however, that proteins not only interact pairwise, but also in higher orders. One example for this are multi-protein complexes. The exon junction complex, for example, consists of four different proteins, and the prim complex consists of three different proteins. We can represent such higher order interactions in a hypergraph. A hypergraph is a mathematical structure that consists of nodes and hyperedges. Hyperedges are generalization of edges, which connect not only nodes pairwise, but also in higher orders. We take multi-protein complex data from the Actome database to construct a hypergraph of human protein complexes. We obtain a network with about 8,000 nodes, which represent the proteins, and about 7,000 hyperedges, which represent protein complexes. First, we investigate whether the hypergraph we obtained has a non-random structure. We do this by investigating two different null models and compare different hypergraph properties between the original hypergraph and the null models. We find that many hypergraph properties, for example, the number of connected components or the degree of sortativity, are different in the original hypergraph than in those random null models. We can also transform the hypergraph into a graph by replacing all higher order interactions with pairwise interactions. In the example here, we have on the hypergraph a hyperedge between the nodes A, B, and C, and we can replace them with pairwise edges between the nodes A and B, B and C, and A and C. Then we can investigate the representing graph and the hypergraph and see whether they give us different biological insights. We find two important differences. First, we compute the degree of the nodes in the hypergraph and the degree of the nodes in the graph. We find that the hypergraph is in better agreement with gene essentiality data than the degree of the nodes in the graph. Second, while the graph appears to have a hierarchical organization, the hypergraph does not. It has been reported that if there is a statistically significant correlation between the graph degree and the local clustering coefficient, that this can be a sign of a hierarchical organization. We find that the here constructed representing graph has such a hierarchical organization, whereas the original hypergraph does not. This indicates that we might observe a hierarchical organization just from the projection procedure of a hypergraph to a graph and not from the biological system itself. This finding might have important indications also for other applications. Thank you very much for your attention. As I said, there's a manuscript out on BioArchive, there's of course also the poster, and there's also the Python code available on GitHub. Thank you very much for your attention.